At some point, we've all stared at the sky looking for a cloud shaped as a dragon, or a dinosaur, or a unicorn, and if we're the scholarly type, then we might have thought how amazing it is that there are millions of tiny water droplets seemingly floating in the sky. Which leads to the question, how heavy is a cloud? The fluffy cotton wool-like cumulus clouds, the ones that make good dragon shapes, contain about half a gram of water in every cubic metre. This is on the lower end for clouds. But even so, doing the maths gives us about half a million kilograms of water in every cubic kilometre of cloud. And that doesn't even include the mass of the air the water particles are held in. It's a tonne of water. Well, actually it's 500 metric tonnes of water. That's a big number, so to put it into a perspective that a puny human mind might comprehend, in every cubic kilometre of clouds, there is the same mass of water as just over 90 adult African elephants. And all this in only one cubic kilometre of cloud. And to compound on this, cloud formation can stretch for hundreds, if not thousands of kilometres, resulting in a number that is truly mind-explodingly big. So let's just say there is a lot of water, and clouds are heavy. Which leads to our second question. How does all that water stay floating up there in the sky? Well, to understand that, first we need to understand how the water gets up there in the first place. Picture a clear summer's morning without a cloud in the sky, at least for now. The heat of the sun causes water to evaporate from plants, from lakes, ponds and seas, and also from the ground itself. This invisible water vapour enters the air just above the ground. The sun also warms up the earth, which in turn warms up the air above it. As warm air is less dense than cool air, this warm, humid air rises. The air mass rises, and as it does so, cools down. As the air cools, it is capable of holding less water, and therefore relative humidity increases until 100% humidity is reached. At which point, the gaseous water vapour condenses into the liquid droplets, and a cloud formation is formed. This altitude is called the lifting condensation level. The air mass in the cloud is still likely to be less dense than the air around it, so will remain floating in the sky. But if the cloud water droplets fall below the lifting condensation level, they will evaporate into the warmer air, ceasing to be visible. And if the air mass is pushed downwards, it will also be warmed, resulting in the cloud evaporating, and so causing the cloud to seemingly float. And these tiny water droplets don't fall all that fast either. Fall velocity in an atmosphere is related to mass and surface area. So a feather falls slower than a brick. A relatively large cloud particle of 100 micrometres in diameter only falls at about 27 centimetres per second. For a more down-to-earth example of this small particles not falling very fast phenomenon, think about dust particles floating in the air illuminated by a ray of sunlight. In a cloud of course eventually the water particles will coagulate and these factors will not keep the cloud floating forever. And then it will, as I'm sure you've experienced, fall back to earth.